In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use SPSS 22 to do correlation in linear regression. And more specifically, we're going to take a look at the scatter plot, the correlation matrix, and the linear regression equation. And you'll be able to use this information to help you uh, navigate the lab that you have. It's different data, but it's the same idea. So I'm going to take a look at the variables for violent crime and single parents, and then I'm going to use those to generate my um, output for correlation linear regression. So one of the first things I typically like to start with is a graph to look look and see if uh, um, anything potentially exists. So I'm going to go into Chart Builder and I'm going to choose a scatter plot just to show you how to do this. I'm going to reset my uh, window so it should look like this. You'll go down to Scatter Plot and choose this, and then we're going to choose this simple scatter plot and bring that into the Chart Editor window. Now on the horizontal axes, I'd like to have the the single parent um, is my x variable or percent of single parent. And then for the, um, the y-axis, I would like to have uh, violent crimes per 100,000 on the y-axis. And once you have that set up, we're going to say OK. Remember the, the x variable goes on the x-axis, the y variable goes on the y-axis. And just to re refresh your memory, uh, that x variable is often called either the dependent variable or the explanatory variable, where the uh, variable on the y-axis is the response variable or the uh, dependent variable. Okay, so I'm going to say OK now, and this should generate my scatter plot, which you can see right here. I'm going to show you a couple cool things that you can do in SPSS with the scatter plot. Now it's kind of hard to tell. Um, there's no line drawn on here, but if you look at it, it seems like it has this upward trend right here. But we can actually have SPSS draw the line on here. So if you double click to activate the chart, it's going to bring up the chart editor window. And one of the cool things is, is you can click on this Add Line Fit tool right here. If you click on that, that'll add the linear regression equation and open up a dialog box where it allows you to choose different types of um, models, linear, cubic, quadratic, um, other things. So I just want that one on there. And one of the things I don't like is how it takes the, the label for that linear regression equation and puts it right here. Um, in the middle of the, the graphic. So if you double click on that, it'll put a yellow box around the outside of that box, and then you should be able to drag it and move it to where you want it. It's, it kind of has to stay attached to the line, but you can move it up and out of the way so it's not blocking some of your graphic. Um, so you can see that it's saying our y hat value, our predicted value, is equal to 5.84e to the second, actually negative 5.84e to the second. It's really negative 584 plus 43.92 times x, okay? So that's our linear regression equation right there, and it's given it to us in the chart. Um, you can also edit other things like the color and the shape of the dots and everything else in here, but I'm not going to get into that right now, okay? So we will close the chart editor, um, and then all those changes should take place on your graphic, and if you want to copy it, you can just right-click and then uh, just simply click Copy, and it'll save it as an image file. So the next thing I want to take a look at is the correlation coefficient and then the linear regression equation, okay? We, are, we technically already have the linear regression equation, but we'll do that anyways. So to get this, we can go to Analyze, um, and then we're going to choose uh, Regression. And I'm going to choose uh, Automatic Linear Modeling, okay? And when I select this, actually, no, that's not the one I wanted, so let me go back in there. Um, analyze regression, and then I'm going to choose linear. All right, so I'm making the assumption that it's linear. And you can see I already brought my variables over here, so you're going to select on the, the, um, the y variable, which is the dependent variable, and then you'll throw that over here. So whatever is your y variable, that goes in the dependent. And then your independent variable, you'll grab that from over here, and then you'll throw it in there, okay? So one of the cool things with this, uh, with the linear regression one, is you can choose different stats and plots and other things. So I'm, I'm just going to go into the statistics menu and show you that what we, what we can choose. So one of the things we want to look at are estimates. We want to look at the model fit. We may want to look at some descriptives. And certainly if you want more than that, you can check other boxes and it'll generate that output for you. So I'm going to say continue. And then I'm going to say, OK, I'm not going to choose any of the other plots or the other options for right now. So the first thing that comes up is this uh, table right here that has the descriptive statistics. So it's giving us our mean for violent crimes per 100,000 and percentage single parent. 
and then it's giving us a standard deviation for those respective variables. And I think one thing that's kind of important is to just take a look and make sure that um, you have the same number of uh, variables in both the x and y axes. Um, right below here, we have our correlation matrix. We're going to ignore everything below uh, uh, Pearson's correlation because we're, we haven't talked about that and we won't talk about that in class. But um, basically, this is a correlation matrix right here. So it's plotting uh, violent crimes per 100,000 uh, versus violent crimes per 100,000 right here. And that's why we get a correlation coefficient of 1. And then it's uh, plotting uh, violent crimes per 100,000 versus uh, percent single parent. And similarly, it's doing the same thing down here. So the reason it does a matrix is sometimes we do multiple um, different variables to look at all the different correlation coefficients. So we come up with this value of 0.781. And 0.781 is probably a, a fairly strong correlation coefficient, and it's positive. So typically when we describe the correlation coefficient, we would describe that as in this instance right here, 0.781 would be a strong positive correlation or a strong positive relationship between uh, violent crimes per 100,000 and percentage single parents. So I'm going to skip the next couple um, outputs that are given right there because we're not talking about those right now in class. But I'm going to go down here to the coefficients matrix. This coefficients matrix right here gives us our slope and our y-intercept out to three decimal places. And it's found right here in this cell. And it doesn't explicitly label it which one is the slope and which one is the y-intercept. But we just saw that a little while ago in the, in the uh, um, scatter plot that we created. So the constant, this is our y-intercept right here. So that's negative 583.873. So that's our y-intercept. Um, and then our, our percentage single parent, this is the value that's attached to the Actually, this is the slope. It's attached to the x variable. So that's 43.916 is our slope of that linear regression equation. Okay, So that gives us our coefficients. Now, one of the things that's, that's important that we talked about in class is we may want to identify things like outliers in the data set. And one of the ways that we might go about doing that is we might want to take a look at a box plot and see if there are outliers present. And the reason outliers are important to identify is because um, they will take and pull the linear regression equation in the direction of the outlier. Like I said in class, uh, the linear regression equation is really like kind of a, for a simple linear regression, is a form of a, a two-dimensional average for the average x and average y, and it plots that two-dimensional average in the form of a line. So outliers affect that line similar to how they would affect the sample mean. So... Um, one of the things that we that we may want to do is we may want to check for those outliers. So I'm going to go to uh, graphs and I'm going to choose chart builder, and I'm going to take these variables individually and take a look at those in the in the box plot. Okay, so I'm going to choose the box plot, and I'm just going to choose this simple box plot over here because I'm going to look at one variable at a time, and we'll look at violent crime rates per 100,000 first. All right. We'll say OK and take a look at that. And you can see that the outlier is case number 9 right there. And let's take a look at the similar thing for single parents. Okay, So we'll go to graphs. We'll go to chart builder. I'm just going to drag this off of here. And then I'm going to drag uh, percentage single parents on here and take a look at that. And again, with percentage single parents, there's actually three outliers on this, case number 9, 25, and 45. So if you wanted to, you could go back to the original data set, uh, which I'll do in just a second, and take a look at those case numbers. So case number 9 is the District of Columbia. And if I go back, I forgot the other two, 25 and 45 for single parent. So 25 is right here. That's Mississippi. And then 45 would be Utah for the percentage single parent for those outliers. So we had three outliers in the, in the one graphic and then um, for the one graphic for single parents. And then the other one, we only had one outlier and it happened to be violent crime per 100,000 and that happens to be District of Columbia. Now, I don't personally like the case number on there, so I'll just refresh your memory on how to change that. If you double click on the number, Actually, double-click and activate the chart editor, then double-click on the number. It'll put a yellow box around the number 9 right there. And to change that, we go to Data Value Labels, and we'd want to swap out the case number with Violent Crimes and say Apply. And that changes it to the actual 
value. So sometimes the actual value is a little bit more meaningful uh, when we look at that. And you could certainly have both the case number and the value on there if you really wanted to as well. So I think this will be enough information to help you get started on the correlation and linear regression lab. And um, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me.